Awesome. Welcome everyone. We will just wait for your videos to turn on. If you'd like to be on video, please know you do not have to be. Um, for students, if you guys can please make sure that your um, everything is muted. That would be great just to not have any background noise. Um, and then we will get started here shortly. And just a heads up to everyone, um, the chat function is being um, managed by our Career Center and by our CMC in Kelstat. So please make sure to take advantage of that throughout the session. Thanks, Emily. Mm -hmm. uh, well, good, I was gonna say good morning, but it is good afternoon now. Happy Wednesday to everyone. Uh, my name is Caitlin Tam. I am one of the assistant directors in the Kelstat Career Management Center. Um, wanted to thank you all for joining us today. I know that normally we would be holding these types of events um, in person, um, but we thank you for taking the time over your lunch hour to join myself um, and Emily Comandera and our teams as we hold our first virtual recruitment event um, for the next academic year. I'd like to um, introduce Emily as well. Hi everyone, um, I'm Emily Comandera. I work within the Career Center and Employer Engagement, so with all um, of our employers in the business career community, and I'm excited to be here with Kate and our CMC and um, talk to you guys about you know, recruiting and accounting and tax and audit and learn a little bit about the opportunities available at Morrison & Morrison. Absolutely. Thanks, Emily. Um, I'd also like to just introduce Maddie Shaw and Adrian Corona, who are our academic um, or assistant directors and academic advisors for the MST programs, MSA and MSAA programs. So for those of you that are CalStat students or even the undergrad that are thinking um, of potentially moving into a grad program, Maddie and Adrian will be your go-to people with any questions regarding academics, careers, and whatnot. Um, we will include a link for both mine and Emily's team um, in the chat here shortly. If you have any questions and need to reach out to Maddie, Adrian, or Emily, um, feel free to do that um, as you see um, necessary. But I'd also like to now introduce James Mahone, who works with Morrison. Um, James, thank you for taking the time today. Uh, to connect with our undergrad and graduate students. Um, you can take it from here. Hello everyone, thanks for having me. Uh, appreciate your time. Um, I graduated uh, from the Paul's program uh, with an MST in 2014. Uh, I still reference it all the time. I still have a lot of the textbooks, a lot of my notes. Uh, believe it or not, it, it does carry with you, uh, especially if you go into the public accounting field. Uh, you never know when it's going to pop up. Um, so graduating in 2014, um, believe it or not, at that time, there was a, another tax controversy, whereas now, you know, it's with COVID and the CARES Act, and every day you turn the news, there's a new stimulus package coming on. In 2014, it was the fiscal cliff, which was the uh, end of the Bush tax cut. So I feel like every four years or so, there is a new dramatic tax controversy. So whether you like taxation or you like public accounting or you know you just kind of bagged into it the good news is is it's always changing and there's always opportunity and there's kind of a, a circular motion of, of a need for younger staff to step in and and kind of catch up on what's going on and, and with today which you know we've seen this happening uh the need for virtual employment uh, it's very important to be able to go with the flow and be able to train at home or at your home office or if you're able to come in, whatever it is, uh, it's very important. So um, I had an excellent experience uh, at DePaul, uh, learned a ton. I would definitely recommend if anyone is, is going in for an MST uh, to take a class with uh, John Camo, who I think is the uh, IRS procedure uh, professor. I think he's still there. I think I saw him on the website. The class was excellent. And if you're ever going to work with the IRS, he, you're going to reference him all the time. And then also Professor Markinson, uh, his, um, I think he had a tax controversy class, which was one of the last ones I took, which is another one where it, you never realize how much is going to apply in your real world until you're in the real world. And it's an excellent class. So I would say if you're in the MST program, take good notes because you're going to be referencing it, you know, as you get into the real world. Um, so a little bit background about our firm is we're located uh, in the South Loop. We are a 40 person full service accounting firm. Um, it's been around for 80 years or so. Um, 
it has had uh, you know sustained growth uh, in a way which allows us to service our clients without getting too large. Um, so when I say full service, um, we have a full tax department um, where people dedicate uh, you know all their time to tax prep, tax planning, tax compliance, and all that good stuff. We have a, a full board uh, accounting team who does the financial statements, reviews, audits, compilations, uh, any of the stuff that uh, clients would need. Um, we actually have employees who kind of dedicate more of their time to bookkeeping purposes, uh, even writing checks, getting them out to the clients, sending them out to the banks, things such as that. Um, so we are a firm that offers you know, a little bit of everything and we are an alternative to the larger firms. And, and that's how we sell ourselves to our clients. So we're not the big four. We're not Baker Tilly, we're not Miller Cooper, and we don't try to be. So we, we don't wanna have you know, a client that we can't service. So we have you know, referrals call us all the time and say, you know, I have you know, this international issue, is it something you can help with? And if it's truly not something that we can add value to, we're upfront and honest with our clients and say, that's really not what we wanna be. We don't wanna wake up one day and have 95 employees and be so spread out that you know, we're not able to service the clients that we've had for years and years. So our firm has uh, an excellent uh, uh, relationship with a lot of the estate planning firms of the Chicagoland area. So what happens um, in our situation is a you know, client, a future client, works with one of the larger estate planning firms. Um, and if you're working with an estate planning firm, you have extreme generational wealth. Um, so they'll work with that attorney and the first thing they'll ask is, you know, who's your CPA? And if the, if the client doesn't really know or doesn't have a relationship, or just isn't sure they're getting proper guidance, they give us a call. So a lot of our clients are referral-based. Actually, all of our clients are referral-based, where you'll never see Morrison Morrison advertising on a bus. You won't see a sign. Everything is organic. So everything we get is directly from our current existing clients or the law firms that we work with. And, you know, I've been around, I worked at some larger firms in the Northwest suburbs and now as an office downtown. And, and I personally feel like that adds uh, a lot of value to our firm in the sense where we're not necessarily trying to be sales pitch people. We don't go out and try and underbid our competitors. We want to add value to the client. So if someone comes in and has a situation that we think we can add value to and justify our fees, it's a huge win. Where we have referrals come in all the time and it's a situation where maybe we're not going to be the most beneficial for them. We're definitely probably not the most cheapest based upon some of our expertise. We have a lot of employees here who have masters we have a couple attorneys on hands we've people been doing it for 30 40 years so some of our bill out rates may not be that comparable uh you know to a larger firm with a client who doesn't have the needs you know that that we would be able to service so we're, we're very honest with uh, our client base and with our employees to kind of let them know what we want to do and how we do it and um you know we have relationships with tax specialists and accounting specialists R&D credits, cost sags, things such as that, where some larger firms may try to do some of that in-house. We realize that's, that's not where our expertise is, so we should you know, do what we do well, and that's work with our clients and advise them how to, how to plan for the future, how to pass their wealth, how to save some money, um, how to get a loan, things such as that. Uh, and we do so in a way where if there's a situation where they need an expert, we already have that expert within fingertip control. Um, so that's kind of the, the pitch on the firm. Um, it's, it's been around for a long time. Um, they don't plan on going anywhere. So it's, it's got a good vibe to it. Um, the profession itself is, is constantly changing. Um, and I feel like that's one of our biggest pluses where uh, even some of our older uh, partners and people who have been here a long time realize that you, you can't just stay flat. You have to go with the flow. So um, with COVID, what happened in you know, March, which was around you know, one of our due dates, essentially, and right around the most important due date of April 15th, city shut down and you know, our office, since we're only 40 people, um, was still available if you needed to come in, um, but was encouraged not to, um, and was encouraged to work from home. But if you weren't able to, just based upon your life experiences, or you know, if you didn't have a, a big enough home or if space wasn't there, you were able to come in and still get your work done. But, definitely offered to those who didn't feel comfortable and who still don't feel comfortable. We have staff members that still haven't come in and don't plan on coming in, you know, until this is cleared. So I think the uh, availability of our, our team to realize that 
you're going to have employees that want to come in every day. You're going to have employees that don't want to come in at all. You're going to have employees that want to kind of bridge the gap a little bit. And, you know, you're going to have employees who have kids and their schedules are going to be different. And, you know, if they're going to colleges and whatnot, it's going to be a little more complex to get that typical nine to five. And we're kind of learning on the fly. You know, I mean, the normal grind of a public accounting firm is, is you work eight to five every single day. And that's when you're available to your clients. And that's when a partner wants to find you and they'll, they'll get the answer then. But now we have staff members, you know, who, who might work seven to noon and then might work six to 10. And at the end of the day, if the work gets done, life is good and you move on. So we're, we're a firm, even though we're not as large as some of our competitors, I think we have all the resources that kind of, you know, make us pretty unique, um, especially in these, you know, very changing, you know, troubling times. That's for sure. Um, but uh, the profession itself, like I said before, is, is constantly changing. So I don't know if everyone in this room is going to try to work in public accounting. Um, but my sales pitch, even if it's not here, if it's not Morrison, Morrison, if it's you know, one of the big four, Baker Tilly, McGladry, whatever large firm in the Chicago area that you want to work in, um, is always looking for staff who are self-starters. As things constantly change, you have to kind of be able to, you know, read a new regulation or a new tax law or a new act as it comes out almost weekly these days and be able to make an informed, educated decision on what you think that means and how you can apply that to your work. So if you're a self-starter and you can motivate on your own and you're confident in yourself, uh, I think public accounting offers a wide world of possibilities. So outside of just the CARES Act and the issues with COVID, there's, there's nonstop court cases come out that just create new opportunities for some of the younger, you know, older staff who are coming into public accounting. For example, the Wayfair case came out in 2018, where now sales tax can be on your sales online, which everyone, and my sister-in-law sells, she makes masks. She sells them, you know, to the family members, and now she's selling them to, to Michigan, Believe it or not, technically, due to the Wafer Act, that's subject to sales tax. So she's kind of opened herself up to a little bit of exposure that she doesn't know about. So when you, when you think of uh, taxation, most people think of, you know, their parents' tax return or their, their friend's business and things like that. But that's not the limits of what goes into public accounting. There's whole other areas where you may not even necessarily deal with that. So, for example, back to the, the Wafer Act, I know some of the big four are dedicating certain departments and defining out the exposure of some of their online clients to see what does every state require on their end. And some states don't want to tax any of it. And some states say, if you don't have anybody here, but you have 100 transactions into our state, you're subject to our sales tax. So the only way you really know that is to grind and go through your books and records and work with your client to see. And that's an opportunity that wasn't there in 2017. That's new and it's growing. So someone who's you know, 60, 65, 70, may not necessarily want to be familiar with those laws. So that's where I constantly say there's opportunities for people coming into the public accounting profession where there's going to be this curve of, of individuals who don't want to learn some of the new issues and, and new things that are out there. And they need us, they need you guys to kind of help them and guide them and get them familiar to make sure everyone's compliant or at least knows what the exposure is because it's, it's up to the taxpayer at the end of the day to kind of do what they see is best. But um, it, it's just unbelievable how much potential work there is out there. So Wayfair is one example, and that's just domestic, essentially. That's states trying to get their piece of the pie. But then you get into international accounting, where you know it's not that hard nowadays to ship something overseas. So the question is, how much stuff overseas generates nexus in that particular country? Does that country have a treaty with us that allows us to do it? Do we have someone doing sales there? There's just all this you know, stuff out there that requires a CPA or an accountant to kind of know what's going on. The client's not going to know. They may know they have a salesperson there in the UK or, you know, in Europe, one of those countries, they may know what's going on, but they not, may not necessarily know what they're successful to. And there's nothing worse than a client getting a nice letter in the mail or a phone call or a visit saying, excellent, you're, you know, a great trader business. Um, you owe us, you know, $75,000 for the past three years of, of, you know, taxes that you haven't withheld. So it's our role and our job to kind of guide them a little bit. And as, as things keep moving and growing, there's just a lot of opportunities out there. So that's my pitch on public accounting in general. Um, again, my pitch on Morrison Morrison is um, we are a firm that's constantly changing. I've been here 10 years and 
when I was hired, I was the youngest person on staff and they kind of realized that we can't hold out hoping for that, you know, eight year experience employee. We almost have to build that employee ourselves. So recently over the past few years, we've probably hired six or seven relatively new couple of years of experience. We have an internship program. We had an individual last year who interned, you know, during tax season or what was supposed to be tax season. Uh, and I think he had a pretty good experience. We have another one here over the summer. We'd like to have two for next tax season, potentially have another one in the winter. And, and that would lead to an opportunity. So if you come in and you like the work, you like the firm, it's challenging. Um, you know, it can lead to an opportunity that maybe you don't just use it as a resume builder. You use that to work the, the upcoming tax season this summer. Um, all with that said, obviously, with making sure that your schoolwork and you know, your goals are being reached at DePaul as well, too. Um, but, but we're a firm where we have a lot of opportunities and we're growing and we're looking for new young staff to kind of help us grow with the times. So. so that's my spiel here. I do have some questions and if no one has any that other schools have kind of, you know, provided that students had, but I figure I might as well start with you guys. And if you have any, feel free. Um, and if not, I can kind of just go through what I've kind of seen before. I'm, I'm sure um, the DePaul team here probably has some as well too, if they want to read some off. Um, yeah. Yeah. Free. Thank you so much, James. That was a really, you know, clear and wonderful look into Morrison and Morrison and the tax profession. So I'm really excited to hear you know, what you have to say to both our questions. And I know students will probably have some great questions. Um, right before we launch into that, I just have a couple of quick polls to get a pulse on who's here with us today. You know, all of our students um, who are in attendance, I thought it'd be helpful for all of us to kind of get a look into um, who's here. So I'm gonna launch these polls really quickly um, about what class level you are here at DePaul. Um, and then um, we also have another poll over whether you're looking for a full-time job or an internship. So I'll give you a quick minute to do that. Um, but yeah, thank you so much, James. I'm really excited to you know, ask some of these questions with you. We already have a couple coming into the chat, so people are excited. I'm a huge uh, tax nerd, if you can't tell. <laughs> the changes that happen daily I mean, if you watch the news every day, someone comes up and says there's a new stimulus package. Mm -hmm. Now, what you might not realize is the way you get that stimulus is through taxation. So if yeah. you never filed the tax return, then, then you don't get that stimulus package. Or if you file the tax return, your income is too high, you don't get it. So everything that comes out, especially at a time like now, is through taxation. Yeah. Uh, another example is Obamacare, the ACA Act. What people don't realize was the requirement to be insured was determined through your tax return. So every time you turn on CNN and they, they reference something, it, it's probably going to be reflected through taxation, through tax legislation. So believe it or not, like it or love it, you know, you're going to be hearing it, you know, for the next many years to come, um, that everything that government pushes is going to come through essentially your tax returns. So. Yeah, that is so relevant to the times right now, too. Um, I think so. We just we just launched our first poll over what class level you are at DePaul, and it looks like we have a pretty um, even breakdown between our master's students and our undergrad. So we have around 21% sophomore, 4% junior, 21% senior, and then 50% masters and 4% alumni. So that's who's here today. And then we also um, have a second poll over what position you're currently seeking. So we're gonna launch that really quick. All right, so it's looking pretty similar to our breakdown in class year of um, undergrad versus grad, um, around 40 or so percent seeking a full-time full position, um, and then 60 or so percent seeking an internship. Um, so that's, that's definitely, I think, helpful for us to know as we, we guide our discussion. Um, so, now that you know we've kind of launched our poll and we've gotten a little pulse on who's here with us in the room um we have a few questions prepared and then students please continue to share your questions in the chat um, but we'll open it up with one of our questions and then we'll go into all of our student questions um first of all james we'd love to know some things your organization has done to show how it values its employees sure so our firm um which you can go to our website we have eight partners 
and, and 40 staff in, in total. So we're actually, uh, we're not very partner heavy, whereas um, some CPA firms, there's almost you know, a one-to-one -one comparison, whereas here it's not necessarily that. So what our partners do is they try to kind of get staff into a particular project that's going to challenge them. So the mindset here essentially is the way to grow and succeed is to be challenged. So we're constantly bringing in new work organically and it doesn't necessarily go to the same person's desk. So for example, real estate up to recently was, was really a big trader business uh, in the Chicagoland area and was really kind of generating a lot of growth for us. And it would be very easy to give it to one person and say, you know, James, you're going to be a real estate person. And it's going to be just you. But then that leaves the person to my left and to my right, not involved in that particular client. And, and the way to truly grow is with client development, client relationships. So it's very easy to talk to another CPA about what's going on in tax code, but it's a whole nother animal when you're trying to describe it to the person who's not a CPA. So what our firm tries to do is to try to challenge employees. And we try to give them new projects and we try to make sure that what they're working on is something that they want to work on and make sure it's something that they knew they were getting into when they came here. So we don't get someone you know, typecasted into one particular role. And then before you know it, that person kind of bores out or burns out depending on how hard the project is. So it's one of those things where we try to keep in touch with our employees to give them the projects that they want to work on. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. James, um, this next question, James, is um, going off of that list that Emily and I provided you okay. from one of our students. Um, this student is asking, um, while doing his homework, Morrison's financial position in the market is outstanding. Um, they are asking, what is the success ingredient um, based on that? The, I'm sorry, you cut off a little bit in the middle of that question. My apologies. Um, this student is asking, what is the success ingredient um, for Morrison's financial position in the market? So Morrison & Morrison uh, is a rather uh, conservative uh, firm in some aspects where we don't overextend ourselves. So um, for example, we had a client meeting yesterday and it was it been 35 returns and probably a, a giant book of business. But if we would have brought that in and not had the adequate staff to do it, we essentially would have provided them bad service. And then that particular potential client would have referred the, the next individual to a different firm because we would have not promised or fulfilled our promises to give them the service they need. So our financial uh, gains are really provided by our service and it's really provided what we provide our clients. So we make sure that whatever we're taking on, we can fulfill our promises. So we turn down work probably more frequently than other firms if we don't think we can get it done and we don't think we can add value to that particular client. So we don't overburden ourselves where now we need seven employees to take on this one client. And before you know it, that client's working with, you know, a bunch of people that don't have a lot of experience and it's a lose-lose for everyone. So I think when I say conservative, it's conservative growth is what we are. We don't wake up one day and want to be, you know, 15 times larger than we are today. We want sustained coordinated growth where each quarter our partners can sit down and talk to the management team and see, do we think we're still adding the appropriate value to our clients? Are we maintaining those relationships? Or if not, you know, our clients are going to go someplace else that's going to offer that to them. So I would say our financial success is generated by our management's knowledge of conservative growth, seeing that we're already, you know, a very profitable firm. That's great to hear. Um, from the poll results we are seeing, there are definitely um, quite a few underclassmen here as well. Um, so one of our students was curious about opportunities for underclassmen. I know you mentioned an internship. Um, are there job shadow opportunities as well? They were curious to learn a little bit about. Yeah, so we're, we're kind of relatively new uh, to an internship program. Um, last year was our first test run and we're still going through it this summer. Um, I think it's been a pretty big hit. It's been a win-win for the individual and for us. Um, and it's definitely opportunities for underclass. Looks like we got a quick little freeze. Hopefully we'll get James back in a second. Am I back? Yes, you're back. <laughs> okay. All right. Sorry about that. No so um, definitely, uh, I don't know why I cut off, but there's definitely uh, positions available for underclassmen. 
And I would think the, uh, the, the most beneficial internship, if you're looking to public accounting, would be a tax season one, just because that's where the largest volume of work is. And the real value to an internship isn't necessarily the monetary value you're going to get out of it. It's what you're learning on the fly. So here, we kind of give interns a little introduction into what we do, and we let them run with it. And, you know, we don't really have a requirement. You don't need to work 40 hours. You don't need to do this. It's really you kind of do what you can. And if you're a type of person who's a grinder and wants to get as much knowledge as possible, good work is going to find your way. So um, there's definitely positions, internships for underclassmen. Um, it's not just tax season, but my recommendation would be if you're looking into public accounting and you want the best experience, that would be the best time to do it just because that's when the highest volume of work is, if that makes sense. Perfect. Um, James, the next question from one of our students, um, I know you briefly touched base uh, talking a little bit about uh, public accounting and then moving into the tax field. This student is ask, asking, are there any opportunities that exist for individuals looking to move into public accounting space who has a number of years experience not in the public space? Should they expect to start at the beginning? That's a great question. Um, no, there definitely is opportunity. So this individual in particular uh, is working in uh, private or you know, non-public accounting. That's the general idea of the question. Correct, yes. Yeah, no, definitely. So I mean, accounting is, you know, it, it transcends, you know, the types of different professions. So if you're working for Nike or Under Armour, whatever it is, right, and you're doing accounts payable, accounts receivable, you're still doing accounting and all that stuff that you're gaining day to day is going to, you know, transition to public accounting if you choose to do that and vice versa. So I, I wouldn't say that person would necessarily come in and start at the bottom by any means, but their tasks are going to be driven by their experience. So if their experience, you know, isn't using the audit software that we would use or the review software that we use or whatever it is, you know, there might be some type of learning curve. But if they've been in accounting for a couple of years, you know, accounting is accounting. Debits, credits, all, it transcends, you know, your profession. So I would think there might be a small learning curve, but I would, I wouldn't, go out on a limb and say they start at the bottom, I would say they're gonna go on what they can handle. So if someone can come in and have a you know decent grasp on what's required of them, then they'll get the task that they can handle, if that makes sense. Absolutely, that definitely makes sense. Um, we also have another question from a student. Um, they were curious about any um, DEI, um, diversity, equity, inclusion, initiatives at Morrison & Morrison, um, or just kind of learning a little bit more like what the support um, is for, for those individuals at the firm. So I cut out one more time, I apologize. Can you say that again? Is that Emily? That's okay. Yeah, um, we had a student curious about the diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives at the firm and what support um, students could expect um, on that front. Yeah, no, we are a firm that's open to anyone. Um, we actually have one of our staffs who we are sponsoring, um, who is not a US citizen, and, and she's doing fantastic and is having a, a great, a great opportunities here. Um, we are all inclusive. Um, we, we don't have any preference uh, regarding, you know, anything such as that. What we're really looking for is a self motivator and whoever that person is will find success. So we are open to, you know, individuals of, of all aspects and any issues or any things we can work with them to you know make sure they have a good experience that's wonderful thank you for sharing um, our next question james is just going to go off of our list that we sent you okay. um, can you talk about um what some of the skills and abilities um that are necessary for someone to succeed in a position at morrison and morrison yeah, sure. So another thing about our firm here is we're kind of titleless. We don't necessarily have specific titles for employees outside of the partners. So most firms, there's kind of a hierarchy as you go in as a staff, you know, and then you move up. All right. Hello? Yes, you're back. Yeah, I'm back. Sorry. So we don't necessarily have titles. It's based upon what your ability to work is, essentially. So um, 
it would really be up to the actual individual. So we almost self-delegate delegate the work to what the person can handle, essentially. So if you're 30, it doesn't automatically mean you're going to be doing the work of a manager or supervisor. You're going to do the work that you can handle. And we have people who have been doing it 15 years longer than me, and they're still preparing tax returns because that's what they're comfortable doing. And Hi, James. You're back with us. I'm sorry, guys. So uh, to, to make a long answer short, it's up to the individual to succeed in what they want to do. We have individuals who are older and don't want the responsibilities of client management and reviewing and such as that. And then we have individuals who are younger than me that are thriving in it. So what we do is we leave it up to the individual to find what they succeed in, essentially. Perfect. Um, okay, so next question. Um, I would love to know a little bit about what you most enjoy about your work at Morrison & Morrison. I know you shared a little bit about that um, from kind of like a broader perspective, but um, with your individual work, what, what motivates you the most um, in your work at Morrison & Morrison? Sorry, can you say that one more time, Emily? Sure, no problem. Um, I was curious to, to learn a little bit about what you enjoy most about your work for the firm. The, what I enjoy the most is every day and every week, you're working on different projects. So the type of firm we are, since we're full service, you may spend six months working on an estate tax return. And then once that's done, you may work six months on the implementing of all the trusts. And then once that's done, you might be on to the next big particular group. So you're never really typecasted into one particular role. You're able to work on multiple different things. So every day when you come into your office, potentially, you may be working on something completely different than you did the prior month. So there's a diverse uh, client base that we have that enables all our staff to kind of have different challenges, you know, throughout the seasons. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks, James. Um, one of our other students uh, asked, what percentage of senior managers and partners are minorities? Reconnecting to some problems. <laughs> All right, I'm back again. I apologize, guys. So I don't know what's uh, our connections is uh, disconnecting here. But go ahead. Can you say that again? Not a problem at all. Um, this question is: What percentage of senior managers and partners are minorities? So that's a great question. I don't know the exact percentages off the top of my head. I can look into that if anyone likes. Um, I, I would say for 40 people, I would say 15 are of some form of minority base, um, but I, I can't do the math. And again, since we're titleists, we don't really have manager or directors or things such as that. So um, I don't actually have like a great answer for that, but I would say, you know, 40 people here, um, you know, 15% are minorities. So we are, you know, open to everything. Perfect, thank you so much. Um, our next question, we were um, curious to learn um, the management style of Morrison & Morrison and what were the types of employees that fit that style well? So the type of employee would be a self-starter and a self-motivator. So our management style is, is very relaxed. There's no pressure. I mean, we work with due dates. So there's always a little bit of pressure, but it's relatively uh, no one's on your back. No one's asking you every day if something's been done but it's really on you as the employee to kind of know what the expectations are. So it's a management style where it's hands off and we let the employee do their own work and get things done at their own, you know, style, especially now, like I said, we have individuals who are working from, you know, nine to midnight because they can't work throughout the day because their home circumstances are different. So it's definitely a hands off management approach where a lot of the, um, you know, Motivation has to come from the particular individual, which I think adds a lot of value to the employee because they're able to do it, you know, in a manner where they see it as best, where it's not, you know, Morrison Morrison has done this 80 years in a row. This is how you're going to do it. If you can find a way that gets it done more efficiently, makes more sense, allows the reviewer to have a better handle on it, then and go ahead and do it. It's, it's up to you to find the best way to get things done in an efficient manner. 
Awesome. Um, James, the next question from one of our students is, what is personally for you the most rewarding slash enjoyable part of being um, a part of Morrison and Morrison? <laughs> most rewarding? Um, well, we're accountants, so it's not the most rewarding job, but I would say um, when you work with a client to achieve their goals. So if you work with a client whose goal is to pass generational wealth to their family equally without breaking up the family, and then when that's done in a matter that's efficient, that's, that's a huge win. When a client is trying to you know, defer some taxation, let's say they have a big year and they're trying to do some tax planning and you work with them and you, and you get your goal and you're able to actually see the finished product and see how much tax they've saved and justify what you've done, I would say that's the most rewarding is that when you, when you actually get, achieve the goal that you've worked with your client to, to do, so. That sounds pretty rewarding to me. Um, that's awesome. Um, I was curious to learn, we had a student um, ask a question in the chat regarding the work environment at Morrison & Morrison. So um, if you were able to kind of go into a little bit more detail about the culture at the firm and what that, what that looks like. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, pre-COVID, you know, when, when everyone's into standard hours, it's an open door policy. Every partner's door is open. Uh, every manager, whatever title you want to call them, their door is open. Um, it's an open concept throughout the hallways where the staff, you know, everyone's able to have multiple staff who probably dedicate half their day just to answering questions for some of the newer staff who've been hired. Um, there's no dumb question. Um, it's one of those things where you're kind of silly for not asking it if you don't know what's supposed to happen with something. So it's, it's a very open environment and, you know, people go to lunch at their own. There's no set timetable. If you have a doctor's appointment, if you have this and that, just get your work done and get it done in an efficient manner. And, you know, no one's going to give you any problems. So it's a very open environment. Thank you, James. Um, we have another question um, about, are there any rotational programs available at Morrison and Morrison? I know um, you launched your internship program um, this last fall, but if you could touch maybe about any rotational programs, that'd be awesome. I caught about two minutes or two seconds of that. So rotational employees? They are asking about um, if you have any options for rotational programs. Um, I know that with your firm, the internship um, program just launched this past fall. Um, this student is just asking about maybe if there's any way that they could work in various different divisions within your firm just to get a better feel of um, different divisions, areas within. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so I would say, and, and again, it comes up to the actual individual. You, work kind of finds what you want to do in public accounting, at least in our firm. So if you want to be a tax specialist, which somehow I found my way into, that's really most of what I do is tax. But if you're interested in the actual accounting portion of it, financial statements, working with banks, things such as that, that's available as well too. If you're interested in bookkeeping because you potentially might see yourself in a small family business and you want to be able to be the controller and you want to kind of know how to balance someone's actual QuickBooks and things such as that, that's also available. So when I say internship, it's not necessarily generated just towards taxation. Um, all fields of accounting would be available. And I would say the work would follow kind of what your desires are, if that makes sense. So it's kind of an, an open idea where we have individuals who you know, have a lot of accounting work that they'd like to pass off to someone. They have a lot of bookkeeping and it's really up to the individual to kind of speak up and find the projects that they like. That's great to hear. That sounds really um, adaptive depending on the skill set of, of the individual. You almost have to know how to do a little bit of everything at a firm like ours where, you know, we're not, no one person is specifically one task. You know, that's where we're different from some of the other firms. So our people who do mostly financial statements you know, are still at cocktail parties and still have to answer tax questions. So they still, you have to have a little bit of both, you know, or as I still run into, hey, I'm getting a loan. Do I need to get a comp? Do I need to get a review? That's not what I do. But if I don't know the answer to that, well, then I've just kind of blown that person off. So you kind of have to know a little bit of all of it. And it's actually great if you're not sure what you want to do, because you'll get to figure it out on the fly. Yeah, that sounds like a really great professional development opportunity too, to kind of get exposure to different areas within the field. Definitely. Um, we had another uh, question come in kind of looking for your advice um, based on your experience in the field. 
um, a student was asking regarding, you know, the timeline of how long people typically stay within roles at Morrison & Morrison. They've heard within Big Four that a lot of folks um, tend to leave within five years or less. So yep. they're curious about kind of like the, the typical tenure that people have within their roles. So that's another one of our, uh, you know, qualities that we, we tend to brag about when we interview with people is that a lot of our staff never leave. So like I said, I've been here 10 years and I was the youngest person at that time. And I would say the average staff person's been here over 15. So staff typically come, and I, and I think a lot of that reason is because we challenge the employee. We don't say, oh, this employee is really good at real estate. This employee is really good at bookkeeping. That's all they're going to do. That's not, that's not at all what we do. If they're good at that, then maybe they're good at something else. So our staff, you know, for the most part, typically never leave unless, you know, they're leaving the state or, you know, their circumstances at home change or something like that. So I would say employees stay, you know, 10, 15, 20 years for the most part. Awesome. I know that that's definitely part of what we touch on um, in the Career Management Center is just making sure that our students are finding that right fit with the right firm or right company um, to allow them to be able to stay for more than a year. So that's great to hear that your employees are staying um, more than a year or two. Um, I am going to wrap it up with the last question here. And if anyone else has um, any other questions, feel free to throw them in the chat. Um, if we do have any other or have time at the end, we'll um, quickly ask those. But the next question was a student wanted to know, what are your expectations from new um, interns or hires? So our expectations and, and everyone's situation is different. So if there's an individual, you know, who can only offer 24 to you know, 25 hours a week, that expectation is obviously much different than the intern who's going to be able to work 40, just based upon the allotted time. So our expectation is almost determined by the actual employee who comes in. So if there's someone who comes in and, and is kind of vocal and honest and says, you know, this is, I'm, I'm moving to California next year and I'm going to intern for 20 hours a week, and this is what I want to accomplish, that's going to be our, our expectation. But if it's someone who comes in and kind of just says, I don't really know what I want to do, I know I want to do public accounting, our expectation is going to be that they are able to kind of work and self-motivate and not necessarily have to have their hand held all the time um, and be able to figure things out on their own and to ask questions, to be confident and, and to kind of be, be fearless. Just, you know, that the good thing with what we do is most part of it, you can change. So if you mess up in QuickBooks, if you mess up a tax return, if you mess up in a financial statement, it's not going to go out the door. You're not the last person to look at it. It's going to be looked at. So we would need someone, the key thing is just to get it to that next level. So I would say our expectation is to just have the individual, the individual be able to get work done and be confident in what they're doing. And as they're doing that, they're going to learn more and it's going to help them grow. So, you know, again, we, we kind of self, we delegate it back down to the individual. We don't have, you know, 15 different bullet points that we want to hit because each person's different. You know, if, if the person can work 45 hours a week, that expectation is gonna be a little different than the person who can only work 20. Thank you so much. Um, this was all incredibly helpful. Um, I know our students have really benefited from you know, getting a lot of their questions answered. I know you mentioned ori originally off the cuff that you had you know, some advice you know, that you wanted to share, or any you know, things that you had prepared. Is there anything that we missed so far? Anything that you think would be important yeah, I kind of yeah, I kind of touched on it, and again, I don't necessarily know if everyone's looking into public accounting or tax or or whatever their you know studies are, um, but if you are, I would just say it, it's constantly changing and it's constantly in need of young staff and hungry staff to come in and be able to educate some of the older individuals. And kind of like I said previously, you need to know a little bit of everything. You can't just be a tax person. You can't just be an accounting person because believe it or not, I mean, you're gonna be at a family barbecue and the first thing's gonna ask you, can I deduct this? Can I do that? And if you're able to answer it with some confidence, you're Hi. I'm back. Sorry. The, so the joys so, of the Zoom. The Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> so that, we totally that's really get it. it. To, to kind of try and get a general idea of all of it. You don't have to master any of it, but you have to know what's out there. And that way, you know, you gain people's trust.
Yeah, that's great. Thank you. James, we had one last question um, that came in from one of our students. He is wondering, do you ever hire folks transitioning careers or do you generally need them to obtain their CPA prior to consideration? No, I mean, it, it helps if you're eligible for the CPA exam, um, just based upon the career path here where, you know, to be able to sit in meetings and stuff, it adds some credibility to your name to have the CPA or at least be eligible to it. But we have individuals who have been here for 15 years and they transitioned from private into public and they, they don't really have a desire to obtain their CPA. Um, it might change their career path a little bit just based upon, you know, you can't sit the IRS, you can't do certain things without that validation. But no, we have individuals, that's, that's where I say we're kind of open to anything. As long as the individual, you know, is willing to kind of self-motivate, it kind of works for us. So yes, the answer is we do not have any issues with someone transitioning um, who isn't a CPA. Perfect. Um, and we would love to know a little bit about what the next steps are for a student. You know, this sounds like such a great place to work. Um, I know a lot of our students are really curious um, to learn about how they should apply or what, what would be the best way for them to go about applying. Um, yes. Do you recommend? So yeah, you know, what they could do, I mean, our website might have some reference to, you know, uploading uh, your, your resumes, but if you want, um, you can just email me and I can pass it along or I can give you points on, you know, you know, what looks great in your resume, what maybe is, you know, not in the direction of what we're looking for and just give you a heads up and we can pass it along to our partners here. So I would say if you guys are okay, Emily and Kate, if you know, want to pass my email out or if you guys want to get them first and then pass them to me, whatever, whatever you think is best. Um, there is the option on our website. It just, that wouldn't come directly to me. That might go to some of our HR individuals. So it may, it may be a little bit of a lag before it sees some of our partners. So I might shortcut that, but um, sure. that would be what I recommend. I will, if you're comfortable with that, I will share your email in the chat if that works for you. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Thank you so much, James. Um, we do have a quick, to our students, we do have a quick little survey I'm going to share as well. Um, but this has been incredibly informative. I am so appreciative of you taking the time. I know um, we've learned a lot and we really, really appreciate, you know, you giving back to DePaul and connecting with our students. And um, it's really been a great, a great afternoon. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having me. And, and again, the MSC program, believe it or not, that is something you will reference the next 20 years of your professional life. So um, it was, it was a, a great experience. So thanks for having me. Yes. Thank you so much. James. And students, if you do need to connect with your um, advisors or post-app students um, with Maddie or um, Adrian, you can find, and you don't have their contact information, I have just added that into the chat um, that has their email addresses um, for the undergrad students. Feel free to connect with Emily's office if you do have future um, questions about um, anything employment-wise and whatnot. Um, we will be having more of these types of events in the next few weeks in the upcoming academic year. Yes, thank you all so much. I just shared the link in the chat as well for making an appointment on Handshake. Um, if you're an undergrad, that would be the best way to go. All right, thanks everyone. Thank you, James, thanks, James. we really right. appreciate it. All right, bye, have a good day, bye. You too, <laughs> bye.